Rose from the grave, defeating debt. Doesn't want you to continue in sin. Doesn't want you to kill your baby, your precious unborn child, made in the image of God. God is knitting that child together in your womb. It's not God's will for you to destroy the work he's doing in your womb. That child is precious in God's sight. There's people who are willing to adopt your baby. Don't kill your baby. Don't become a murderer. Become a mother. Or give your baby up for adoption, but don't become a murderer of a child. God will hold you accountable for that. But even now, God is willing, he's able, even though you're attempting, considering, killing your unborn child, God is able to change your life, even right now, to change your heart and your mind. He changed me almost 23 years ago. I was a wicked sinner, I was vile, I was hateful, I was selfish, I didn't care about other people, let alone little children. But Jesus Christ stepped in and changed my life. He can change your life. There's no good excuse to kill a baby. And the Bible says God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. That baby's done nothing wrong. That baby's done nothing wrong to deserve this from you. Follow Jesus, don't kill a baby. Babies are precious in his sight. Babies are precious in God's sight. It's not a blob in your womb, it's a baby. Jesus Christ died for you, to deliver you from this. And the cause of this, this temptation, this that might come to fruition of killing a baby. The cause of it is sin. Your motive is sinful. No matter what your motive is, it's sinful. And God is not pleased with it. God will not hold you guiltless. If you can, if you can if you go forth with this act, God will not hold you guiltless. God's gonna hold you accountable. You're acting like Cain, your baby's able. Don't shed that blood, it'll cry out from the ground against you. One of the most wicked acts someone could do is take the life of another, especially someone who is defenseless, who is innocent, who is voiceless. And we're here this morning to not only be a voice for the voiceless, but be a voice for God in your life. Maybe you don't have anyone speaking into your life, the voice of God, the Word of God, but we're here to do that this morning. And God is a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger, abundant in loving kindness, one who relents from doing harm. He cares enough about you this morning to send us here, to warn you, to plead with you not to do this thing, not to murder a baby. What you're doing here this morning is no different than getting a revolver out and putting a bullet in a child's head. It's no different. It's still life, very young life, very undeveloped life, maybe, but still life. It doesn't matter how it was conceived, whether the baby was conceived through fornication, through rape, through incest, it does not matter. It's still a baby that God is knitting together. They have no right to put a stop to God's work. You have no right to take the life of another. You have no right. Only God has that right. And God surely has not told you to kill your baby this morning. 
God wants you to be a mother, not a murderer. Think about eternity. Think about your life. The Bible says a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. That's your life. What happens if you die from complications this morning, from having an abortion? Not only do you murder your baby, but you die yourself. And then you stand before God to give an account of your life, of every thought, word, and deed. What will you say to God then when you stand before his throne to give an account of this action? You'll have no excuse. Maybe this, what you're doing this morning is a cause of, because of fornication. Well, this is why the Bible says that you should not have sex before marriage. Sex is made for marriage, a holy union between a man and a woman in the sight of God. And so many bad things come from fornication, whether it's STDs or unwanted pregnancies or abortion. All these things, for the most part, come from fornication. Don't kill your baby because it's inconvenient. Don't kill the life of another. Don't snuff out the life of another for the sake of your own selfish desires. How wicked can you be? But yet, Jesus died for murderers. If you hate your brother in your heart, you're a murderer at heart, the Bible says. And right now, if you're attempting to kill your unborn child, you're a murderer at heart, even now, before you do it. God sees your heart. He knows your motives. He knows how selfish you're being. And he's calling you to be selfless. Being a mother, being a father is a sacrifice. It's selflessness. I can't think of all the sacrifices I've made for my children. I can't name them and number them all. <laughs> but think about the fatherhood of God, how he gave up the greatest sacrifice, Jesus Christ to die for you. And Jesus died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Yes, Jesus died and rose again, not so you continue to be a sinner, not so you be sexually immoral, not so you kill an unborn baby, that you stop living for yourself and start living for him who died for you and rose again. You're like a sniper. You're like an assassin. You're literally planned. You made an appointment and you planned to come here this morning to kill your unborn child. And here we are strangers to your child. We're not the parents of your child. Strangers to you, strangers to your child, loving your child more than you do. Don't become an assassin this morning. Don't become a hitman this morning. Don't aid and abet the actual hitman inside there this morning who destroys babies' lives by the thousands every year. But you literally made an appointment to kill your baby. If that happened against a grown man or a grown woman, it'd be a conspiracy. There'd be jail time involved. 
and not against a grown man or woman who can protect themselves, defend themselves. But here you have a little baby, a little child in your womb. God has already determined its DNA, what personality it will have, what color eyes it will have, what color hair, what it's going to look like. God's already determined those things through the DNA, chosen. And you're going to take his life out? Shame. Turn from shame. Turn to Jesus. The unrighteous won't inherit God's kingdom. The unrighteous will not inherit God's kingdom. God is calling you to repentance. He's calling you to righteousness. This is not righteous. This is wicked. This is not woman's health. This is woman's death because the wages of sin is death. Don't you see what you're doing? Don't deceive yourselves. The thinking you're doing something okay or right or that's acceptable to God. Doesn't matter what America says. Doesn't matter what laws say things are okay. It's not okay in God's eyes. And that's all that matters. Man's law matters nothing compared to God's law. On judgment day, you'll not be judged according to man's law. On judgment day, you won't be able to say to God, but, but America said I could do it. They even paid for it. It won't matter. God says, thou shalt not kill. And you'll become a murderer this morning if you go through with it. But I plead with you not to. I plead with you, reconsider. Come to your senses. Go home, repent. Get right with God while you still can. Besides the fact that you'll become a murderer this morning if you kill your child, there's lots of other side effects to abortion because you're stopping a natural process in its tracks. It's not normal. It can affect the rest of your life in a physical, emotional, psychological way. There's so many women who've had abortion that testify to these things. The Bible says you will reap what you sow. You will reap what you sow. Don't reap destruction in your life by sowing to the flesh. But instead, reap eternal life through sowing to the Spirit by giving your life to Jesus, letting Him change you, letting Him cleanse you, let him make you new. Before I became a Christian, I was a fornicator, and a drunkard, and a liar, and a thief, and God changed me. He delivered me. And before I became a Christian, I was a very sexually immoral person. I had sex outside of marriage dozens of times. And if I would have got a woman pregnant, I probably would have considered abortion. That doesn't make it okay, though. That doesn't make it righteous. That would have just added to my sins. Christ can forgive you of your sins, you never presume upon that by going out and sitting and saying, well, I'll ask for forgiveness afterwards. That's not the way it works. You're hardening your heart. You're hardening your heart. You're in danger. You don't know when you're going to die. You don't know when you'll be called to give an account of your life. And the Bible says you'll give account for every work 
including every deed done in darkness. You're going here this morning, early on, going to a building, to a dark room in the corner of the building, trying to hide your sin from the world. But God sees it. He sees the good and the evil, and his eyes are on the ways of men. And he sees all your steps. He sees you sitting in your car waiting for your appointment time. He sees you. He'll see you if you go into that, that building, if you go into that office, he will see you. God is not blind to your sin. And it doesn't matter how many people tell you it's okay. It's not okay. It's never okay to kill a baby. Don't do it. Don't kill your precious unborn child. Go home. Get right with God. Give up your sin. Don't go to hell. Jesus can save you from your sin. He can save you from hell. He can save you from condemnation and guilt. He wants to change you, give you a new life. Oh, experiencing the love of God found in the cross of Calvary, how precious it is, how wonderful it is. not loving what you're doing here this morning. It's hateful. See, when someone loves, they give. They sacrifice. They don't take away. See, Jesus loved, so he gave his life. If you love that child, you give your life for it. Instead of taking the life of that child, you're literally making a human sacrifice this morning to convenience and selfishness. You have an idol in your life. God is calling you to repent. Change your mind. Repent of this. It's not too late. Repent. Don't do it. The people inside that building no matter how nice they are to you, quote unquote, they don't love you. They don't love your child. If they did, this place wouldn't even be here. But because they offer you a way to easily kill your child, it shows they don't love you. And God loves all men. And what does God say? God says, repent. What does God say to sinners? He says, go and sin no more. There's no good reason to kill your child. Repent. Turn from your sin. Don't seek to soothe your conscience. Your conscience has been given to you by God to tell you not to do such things. Wake up. Come to your senses. Don't do this. Jesus died to free you from this. It's a shameful thing that a mother would kill her child. Doesn't matter the situation, the circumstances. God is calling you to repentance. You don't have to do this. God loves that child. He's calling you to love that child, calling you to love Jesus and obey him. I know it's a shameful thing what you're doing here this morning. You shouldn't be doing it. You know it. God's word says so. Your conscience tells you so. But you do it anyway.
Man, it's just hardness of heart, man. Hard, man. How someone could do this. It's like cattle being followed into a cattle truck, man, going to the slaughter. Do you think this morning you're only killing your baby, but you're killing yourself one sin at a time? For the wages of sin is death. You're destroying your soul. You're hardening your heart. How can you harden your heart? towards your baby. Don't harden your heart towards God who's given you a guilty conscience right now. And you say to yourself, I don't feel guilty. You're in a worse place than anyone else. Don't do what you know you shouldn't do. Repent. It's not too late. You can walk out. Nothing's holding you in there except your selfishness and your pride. Don't let your sin give birth to more sin. So you got pregnant. You didn't want to. And it was done in a sinful way. Don't let that give birth to more sin. Let it give birth to a blessing. And any men who are here in your car or inside that building, you're a coward. You're a coward if you're killing your baby. Shame on you. Don't, Don't kill matter. your baby. Don't lives matter to you, sir? Don't lives matter? Shame if you kill your child. It's a shameful thing. Do you have a right to be called a man? Men protect children and put their body in front of children, lay on their lives for children, not kill children so they can continue on their life the way they want to. You're making that child a statistic. Come on, man, there's other options. That's your child, your DNA. You're gonna destroy your DNA, sir. Sorry, brother. No, bro, go ahead. No, I just, I don't want to. Go ahead, bro, I'm sorry. <laughs> these, guys, these men got it, like, the woman's the weaker vessel, you know, so. There's a man sitting in that car right there, the black one, I think. Yeah, that, that Camaro, right? And then that Nissan as well. Yeah. These men got it like, they're probably one of the main ones pushing them to do it. Yeah. Because they don't want to pay child support. Yeah. If you're man enough to have sex with a woman, you better be man enough to be a father. That's right. And if not, keep it in your pants. Just because you don't want to pay child support, you don't want responsibility? Well, there's only one answer to that. Celibacy. Don't have sex. There's other options. Other options than killing your baby. That life matters to God, and your life matters too. You could give that child up for adoption. They're not gonna tell you that in there. They just wanna make money off your baby and off of you.
over here, man. Yeah, of course not. He's ashamed. I just pray that he would like not listen to that. Yeah. Well, they're they're back in the car at least. Yeah, she's got a little pamphlet, but maybe that's maybe they're just here to get information or something. Hopefully. Well, I come this early in the morning for information. Yeah, that's true. Come any time of the day. Right? Yeah, you come any time of day, get in the morning. That's a good point. You get on the internet. It's true. I don't know if they do the pills here or not. Hopefully she didn't just take a pill or something like that, you know? Yeah, she wasn't in there very long. She doesn't look very pregnant. No. None of them look really pregnant. Yeah. They all look pretty early. They weren't really showing. Of course, that's, that's the trickery of this whole thing, man. They, they get it done before it's showing, so nobody knows. Yeah. That's the trick to it all. They know it's, it's shameful that they got pregnant at wedlock. Yeah. You know? Or they got pregnant at a young age oh, and they're going to ruin their life. That might, I don't know if he's a, he looks a little bit older than her. He might be her dad, her dad or something. Either know. way, man. Huh? Either way. Oh, I know. Your yeah. grandfather's going to kill his, his grandchild? Yeah. Or push his daughter to kill his grandchild? I can't wait to have grandchildren, man. <laughs> you know? It's a little way it's off, I'm sure, but... I just saw a guy out of the white car. Huh? Someone got out of the white car? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Every, every other car saw someone got out of it. A six. Six from this morning. There's someone still sitting in that van. I think there is. I don't know. I, I don't know if I saw anyone get out of that van. Yeah, I, I saw a lady get out. Oh, okay. I can't tell. There's other options than. Aborting your baby, killing your baby. There's a lot of loving families that would take a young child. God saw that baby before it was formed in the womb. If it's a financial thing, there's help for that. If you're just using it as a contraceptive, then you need to repent. Because one sin doesn't cover another. Young lady, there's help for your baby. You gotta stand before God one day, young lady, please. It's not worth it. Jesus loves that child and he loves you. The Bible says it'd be better for a person to put a millstone around their neck and to be cast into the sea than to offend one of these little ones. Turn to Jesus, man. Don't you don't you fear God? Turn to Jesus. Be a man. Where are the men at? Where are the men? Don't be a coward. A man is supposed to take care of his family, not kill a child. These abortion clinics target certain areas, impoverished areas, African-American communities, for a reason. You get mad when African-Americans are killed in the street by white cops? What are you doing to your baby? Don't get mad. Because that's what you're doing to your baby. And God loves that child. Even though it might have been a sin. That's right. There's still repentance for sin. But you're not going to change that by adding more sin on top of fornication. <laughs> if you're a father to a daughter, 
who's pregnant. You're killing your grandchild. Folks, there's other options. This is so convenient, isn't it? Just sacrifice your baby. If you need help, there's help. You don't have to kill a child. That is a child. There's other options for you to consider. Folks, the Lord Jesus Christ loves that baby and he loves your soul, but he hates what you're doing. And everybody's going to give an account before God in that day. You're going to stand before God and account for the shedding of innocent blood. The Bible says in Proverbs 16, doth the Lord hate, yea, seven. And one of them is shedding innocent blood. Don't be a coward man. Take care of your baby. There's help other than just the convenience of killing a child. You don't have to do this. That baby is precious in the sight of God and innocent and is in your womb and it's supposed to be a safe place. But a pill or a needle or a suction cup is gonna tear its life away. Don't let them lie to you. That is a baby. That baby has a heartbeat within 20 days. Right, 20 days? I think so, yeah. 20 days. That baby has DNA. There's other options than killing a baby. God will help you. You don't have to do this. There's help. There's help, folks. The Lord loves that baby. Don't lives matter to you? Don't kill that baby. Don't you? Doesn't that life matter to you? Golly. These are little lives. Folks, lives that may have a good life with the Lord. God can use them to be a preacher, to use to deliver souls from hell. You're going to be held accountable as an accessory to murder. If you gave money or convinced a person, a child, to be killed, you're an accessory to murder in the eyes of God. And God will not hold you guiltless. Don't be a coward, man. Don't be cowards. You're supposed to watch over the innocent, men And be filled with the power of God. Repent and turn to Jesus Christ. Turn to Jesus and he'll give you the strength and the boldness. To be a man. He'll give you the strength and the boldness to be a man. And to take care of these babies. You want to preach focus? Yeah. This is not women's health. This is women's death. This is definitely not an essential service. Killing babies. The fact that it's seen as essential is a shame to America. You say you care about the lives of people. You say you care about women's health. What about the health of that little woman inside the mother's womb? You say you care about people being put to death 
unjustly in the court system? What about the lives here today being put to death unjustly at a supposed doctor's office? This is not right. You know what you're doing is not right. That's why you feel shame. That's why you feel guilt. That's why you hang your head. Listen to the voice of your conscience. It's the voice of God speaking to you. Do not do this. Your conscience has been given to you by God. And God calls you to repent. God says, thou shall not kill. Don't be a killer. Don't be a murderer. Be a mother. Don't be a murderer. Be a father. God sees this wickedness. God's going to hold you accountable if you don't repent. How hard-hearted do you have to be to kill a baby? No voice, no defense, innocent. You are the guilty ones. If anyone deserves the death penalty this morning, it's not that baby. It's that supposed doctor in there, those nurses, and you as an accessory to murder. What have they done wrong? Why are they put, being put to death this morning? What have they done wrong? Nothing. These babies have done nothing wrong. You're the one that's done wrong. But repent. Repent. God will give you mercy. You become born again. Aren't you thankful your mother didn't abort you? Aren't you thankful your father didn't pay someone to murder you? Well, love your neighbor as yourself. <clears throat> that baby in your womb is your neighbor, the closest neighbor you'll ever have. That baby's literally glowing inside of you, in your womb. And Jesus said, the second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. Now tell me, do you want to be killed for doing nothing wrong? Well, don't kill somebody else, especially your own child. What's wrong with you? Why are you so hard-hearted? You need to repent. You need to go and sin no more. You need to stop being so selfish. God is calling you to repentance. And listen to his promise. He says, repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins might be blotted out, that times of refreshing might come from the presence of the Lord. God wants to give you times of refreshing. Right now, you're in times of guilt and times of condemnation, and rightly so. Times of shame, and rightly so. Because what you're doing is wrong. It's wrong, and you know it. So if you feel shame and guilt, that is your God-given conscience dealing with you. Listen to your conscience. Forget about what the world says to you. Listen to what the Word says to you. Thou shalt not kill. Forget about the doctors say to you. Listen to your conscience. Forget about what the law of man says. Listen to what the law of God says. Thou shalt not kill. Where will these man-made laws be on Judgment Day? Thrown in a trash where they belong. But God's law stands forever. The flowers fade, the grass withers, but the Word of God endures forever. Forever. It's how you'll be judged according to God's Word. But yet, still today, you break God's word. I know of three cowards, at least, probably four cowards this morning, sitting in your car while your baby is put to death. Shame on you. 
Shame on you, cowards. The Bible says the cowardly will not inherit the kingdom of God. The cowardly will not inherit the kingdom of God. Repent. Don't become a murderer. Become a mother. Become a father. Be responsible. Take responsibility for your actions. Do what is right. Do what is right. The way you're so lax a days ago about these things baffles me. Like a cold-blooded murderer. You know, when people act like there's nothing wrong, when they kill, they're called psychopaths. The people who act like they're doing nothing wrong, when they're killing someone, they're psychopaths. Is that what you are? A psychopath? You know that guilt and shame you feel right now? You continue to harden your heart. You're eventually not going to feel it anymore. These people inside don't love you. They don't care for you. I wonder, are they keeping you six feet apart in there? I wonder, do they really care about you? I wonder how they're going to virus today. Because listen, you're definitely not under the protection of God this morning. You don't have the mercy of God in your life this morning. I don't care where you went on Sunday. I don't care where you're used to going on Sunday. I don't care what you call yourself or how you were raised. You're not a Christian if you're here to murder a baby. The Bible said, murder shall have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That's what awaits you if you refuse to repent. Oh, come to your senses. Why does a stranger on a street corner who you don't know have to plead for the life of your child? Your child. But yet God has sent us here this morning to plead with you to come to your senses, to repent. And let's face it, we all know this isn't your only sin. Someone doesn't go from being holy to murdering a baby. The Bible said all liars shall have their part and the lake that burns with fire and brimstone to the second death. Idolaters will not inherit the kingdom of God. Fornicators won't inherit the kingdom of God. Thieves. We all know your sin is great in the sight of God. This is not your only sin. But right now, because you're refusing to repent and you're despising the goodness of God, the long-suffering God, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath. You're under the wrath of God because of your sin. And the only way you can come out from under the wrath of God is to repent, turn to Jesus Christ, and live. Don't continue your sin and go to hell. Repent and live. Ask yourself, does that man in that car love you? Does he love you? Oh, baby, I love you, baby. Yeah, right. If he loved you, he wouldn't fornicate with you. If he loved you, he wouldn't try to influence you to murder a baby. He'd try to stop you. He wouldn't drive you here. And if you're sitting in your car this morning and you drove a woman here, to become a murderer of our baby. You don't love that woman. You don't even love yourself. Because you're sinning against God. And God's anger and wrath is upon you. 
But his anger and wrath can pass over if you repent, if you turn from your sin, put your faith in Jesus Christ, who died for you and rose again from the grave. You see, while you put a baby to death this morning, Jesus defeated death. While you put a baby to death this morning, Jesus Christ defeated death. Just look how they pile you in. Just look how they pile you in that office. They really care about your health. They really care about you. No, they want your money. They want your money. And the cost, your baby's life. They want your money and, your, and the cost, your baby's life. Really? You're gonna pay someone to kill your baby? That's the way it works now. You can try to ignore. You can try to ignore. But God's word will stand. You can ignore it now. But there's coming a day when you won't be able to ignore it any longer. There's coming a day when God's word will stand and you'll be judged by it whether you like it or not. And I'm telling you, judge yourself now. Judge yourself according to God's word now. And judge yourself a guilty sinner in need of a savior. And when Jesus Christ saves, he changes. When Jesus Christ saves, he transforms. He won't leave you as a murderer. He won't leave you as a drunkard or a pot smoker. He won't leave you as a drug user, as a fornicator, as a liar, and a thief. Jesus Christ changes. I know, he's changed me. My brother knows, he's changed him. We're just men of God, with a mess of God, pleading with you to do what is right, pleading with you to repent while you still can. Instead of seeking convenience, instead of seeking convenience, seek the Lord. Instead of seeking an abortion, seek the Lord while he may be found. Amazing, you'll stay in your house because of the virus. You'll stay, do all these things. You'll stay away from your job because of the virus. When it comes to killing a baby, hey, let's go out early in the morning. Let's go kill the baby. There's a lot of things you won't get up for, but you'll get up early in the morning to kill your baby. You'll get up early in the morning to kill your baby. Repent. Turn from your sins. This is not the only option. You may say, well, I can't afford a baby. You can't afford to kill a baby. You can't afford to be a sinner. You say, well, I, I, can't, I can't bear with the idea of giving my baby to somebody else. You're already doing that. You're giving your baby to a murderer this morning. You're paying a hitman to snuff out your baby's life. If you allow the baby born and paid someone to come in the middle of the night and shoot him in the head, it'd be no different. No different. Why do you see that's different then? Even the law of the land, when a mother who's pregnant is murdered, the person who murdered is charged with two counts of murder. You see how inconsistent the laws of the man are? But the law of God is perfect. It's holy. It's consistent. And he says, thou shalt not kill. No exceptions. He didn't say, okay, well, 
If you got someone pregnant in an accident, it's okay to kill then. Well, if the baby's gonna ruin your life and make it inconvenient, it's okay then. No, it's never okay. It's never okay to kill a baby. It never will be okay. No matter how many laws are made, no matter how many people tell you it's okay, no matter how many people pat you on the back, it's not okay. And there is no peace with God for the ungodly. What you're doing this morning is ungodly. And there is no peace with God. You'll have no peace. People can pat you in the back, tell you it's okay, you couldn't help it, no big deal, it's not a baby. No peace. You know who the Prince of Peace is? Jesus Christ. He's the Prince of Peace. You know who the author of confusion is? The devil. The devil. The author of confusion. But it's clarity that comes from God's Word. Clarity comes from God's Word. It's a shame that America, supposedly home of the free, land of the brave, land of the free, home of the brave, supposedly. Supposedly America's home of the free, but they're not free to be born. Many people talk about slavery and how bad it is, and it was horrible. But how much worse is this? How much worse is this? Killing a baby. You know, we look down at history, at slave owners, how wicked they were, how brutally they treated people. But now you're paying someone to murder your baby. You're worse. A hundred times worse. <laughs> it's like 10 we've had already. Yeah. Tenth one, man. Look at that, another one. Don't kill your baby. Don't kill your baby. Doesn't that life matter to you, man? Doesn't that life matter? God is watching you, man. There's other options. You said F you. You just strut right in there like it's no big deal. Snuff out the baby. Kill the baby. No big deal, right? No, it's a big deal in God's eyes. And God's going to hold you accountable for your sin. Be a man. God's going to hold you accountable. Take care of your baby. It's a shame. What you're doing is shameful. Don't be a coward. Repent. Take care of your baby, man. You're the man. Where are the men at? Where are the men that's supposed to take care of their babies? Shame on you. There's other options. You don't have to kill a baby. You can adopt. You can adopt. Don't be a coward. We're here to help you. What did he say? He said, you don't know me like that, bro. He's I, know, I know he's going in there. <laughs> All I need to know about you today is you're coming here to kill a baby. That tells me enough. You're not a man. You're a coward. You're not a man. You're a murderer. You're not a mother. You're a murderer. That's all I need to know. I don't need to know you like that, bro. I know you're here to murder a baby. That means you're a coward and you're a murderer. And you're paying for it. You're paying a hitman to take out your baby's life. Wicked, shameful. God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. I don't think I saw someone come out of that car on the other side of the van. Yeah, I don't think anybody came out yet. No, no I don't think so. <laughs> Murder is sin in God's eyes. Murder is sin in God's eyes. This is murder.
that young man would come over and talk with us. Yeah. Young man, we could talk to you. Hey, man, you don't need to kill your baby. You can give it up for adoption. Hey, man, if you can't afford the baby, there's help. Don't just kill the baby, man. You got to be a man. We're here to help you, man. It's not what a man does. Maybe you had no good examples of a man in your life, but it's not what a man does. A man takes responsibility. A man lays his life down for his children, not lay his children's life down for him. God is the perfect father. He is the perfect example. They both gave up a lot to make us his children. You don't have to do this, ma'am. Repent. Go home. That was a truck I pulled over there. Hispanic. We'd love to talk to you about other options for your baby and about your soul. About your soul, where God wants your soul to be and where you're heading right now. It's not God's will that any should perish. That's right. <laughs> God wants to save your soul. Jesus said in John chapter 3, John did, not Jesus. For this is the condemnation that's entered into the world, that men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil, they would not come to the light. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Folks, God is not winking or mocking or turning a blind eye to sin. But he's giving you an opportunity to make it right through Jesus Christ. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ came to the earth. God came down as a man. And he lived a perfect and sinless and holy life. The Bible says in Leviticus 17, that the blood is for atonement. Right. God is a spirit and he can't bleed, so he had to become a man to bleed for you so that he could pay for your sin. <laughs> but he said to repent. That means turn away from sin and turn to God through Jesus Christ and to believe by faith in what he did for you on that cross the blood that was shed for you. The only other alternative is the wrath of God. Right. Where it says in John chapter three is abiding on the unbeliever. God's wrath is abiding on you until you repent and receive his conditions of peace. Right. <clears throat> he's like a kingdom who's coming to invade the country and he's offering terms of peace before he destroys it. Right now, God is your enemy, but he's trying to be your friend. And he demonstrated that through Jesus Christ. What are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with Jesus Christ and his blood? That's your only hope. Your only hope is the blood of Jesus. That is the love of God. God's love is not just this fake mercy. He is also just. He's not just going to forgive you when you stand before him and you haven't repented and put your faith and trust in Jesus as your Lord and your Savior and turned away from sin by his grace. You're not just going to stand before God and say, I didn't know, or I was under pressure. God is not going to take any excuse. Only the blood of Jesus repentance from sin and faith in his blood to cleanse you, to make you holy so that you can stand before a holy God and walk holy in this world without sin, without spot or blemish. And what you're doing right now, what you're doing right now is convenient.
convenient for you. But I can tell you right now, God hates it. God hates the shedding of innocent blood. God hates a lying tongue, feet that are swift to do mischief. And this is mischief. A proud look, like some of you are going in there with a proud look about what you're doing. God hates these things, but he loves you enough to give you an opportunity to be born again, to have a different mind about the world, about the kingdom coming. Folks, Jesus is coming. Jesus Christ is returning one day, and you've got to be ready to stand before him. Right now, you're not ready. Right now, if you died, if you left this parking lot and got hit by a semi-truck, if you got shot in the street, if you died of, of whatever, had an accident, you're gonna wake up in hell. That's the truth. And that's not God's fault, that's your fault. That's, that's, a, that's a dad right that's there. That's dad right there, yeah. That's a dad right there. You wanna preach, brother? Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Dad. Sir, you're not a real father. You're not a real father taking your daughter to murder her baby. Young lady, you don't have to murder your baby. God, it's not God's will for you to murder your baby. There's other options. You don't have to have the guilt and shame and condemnation of your sin. <clears throat> what a shame, sir. You'll take your daughter to murder your grandbaby. The grandchildren are a blessing from God. And you're going to kill a blessing. Babies are a blessing from God. And you're going to kill a blessing. It's amazing how quickly people dispose of blessings. How many blessings you forsake because of your sin. And you're so blind to it. What a shame. I testify to you. I have eight children at home. And each and every one of them is a blessing to me. Each one's unique and different. Each one's a gift of God. They're a blessing to me. Yes, there's difficulties. Yes, there's trials. Yes, there's hard times and sacrifice to be made. Yes, it costs money, but it's worth everything. And you couldn't do anything to get me to give up my children, not one of them. No matter how hard it's been, they're a blessing. And you are forsaking blessings this morning by having your baby killed, by having your grandbaby killed, you're forsaking a blessing. And instead, you're inheriting, you're receiving a curse. Because the curse of God is upon murderers. What happened to Cain? He was marked when he killed Abel. He was marked. And it felt too overbearing to him. When you kill someone, you're marked as a murderer. And the only way to get rid of your murder is to repent. And even now, before you commit the act, the Bible says that you're a murderer at heart because God sees your heart, your motives, and you're a murderer at heart. I went over here, whatever. I'm trying to preach over the wall. Yeah. It's not God's will for you to kill your baby. It's not God's will for you to kill your grandbaby. 
God is not pleased what you're doing here this morning, leading your daughter, your girlfriend, to this place to kill a child, an innocent, defenseless, unborn child. Listen to the voice of God calling out to you to repent. Stop it. Go inside that office and pull her out. Go inside that office and pull her out. It's not too late. Take action. Be a man. Be a father. Be a grandfather. Do what is right. Yes, there is shame in being pregnant out of wedlock. But how much more, how much greater the shame of being a murderer, of killing a baby. Shame. Guilt, condemnation from God. God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. It was getting to him, wasn't it? He's convicted, bro. Yeah, he was like hearing it. Just like this. He's troubled, bro. Sure. He's troubled. Every, is there a reason to be troubled? I just pray. Lord, right now, we just ask you, Father. He's troubled. Father, work in his heart. He's convicted, Lord, as he's driving, Father, that that word would go deep into his soul, that he would change his mind. Go get his daughter, Please, Jesus. There's men who have status. And when their daughter does something shameful and gets pregnant out of wedlock, they want to snuff it out. Just protect their own reputation. You know? Make themselves look good. Keep that clean image. Because to them, that matters more. It's like an idol to them. It matters more to them than actually having their baby, their unborn granddaughter or, or baby yeah. live. Squeaky clean image. Yeah. That's an idol, yeah. But when someone finds out they had an abortion or you know, led their daughter or, or girlfriend to get an abortion, that, that image isn't, isn't squeaky clean anymore anyway. People are going to find out. I'm trying to figure out what these folks are doing. Like he walked out and looked at our side and left. What would you think if all the people you know knew you were here this morning doing this? Your parents, your grandparents, your closest friends, your co-workers, the people you go to church with, what would you think if they all found out? You see, you know it's wrong. You know it's wrong. Because you don't want anyone to know about this. That's why you come here so early in the morning. There's so many things you won't get up in the morning for. Think about how many times you've been late for work because you were too tired. And they pay you to go there. But here you are this morning paying someone else to kill your baby. And you got up early in the morning, right on time. Don't want to be late, got to get it done. <laughs> so if you're here this morning to keep a squeaky clean image, to make life convenient, it's not working. People know, people will find out, and worse than anything like that, God knows. The eyes of the Lord in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. God sees the murder of babies in this place, and God is angry with the wicked every day. And all involved will be in trouble on Judgment Day. Repent while you still can. Give up your sin. Turn to God. He can help you. He can truly help you. God can help you. These doctors, supposed doctors in here and nurses can't help you. They don't care about you. 
They wouldn't die for you. They're bringing you here to kill your baby. And they get paid for it. But God proved his love for you. He has proved his love for you by laying down his life for you. And he commands all men everywhere to repent. Because there's coming a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. And you can try to block out what we're saying, ignore what we're saying through watching YouTube, watching videos, listening to music. But on Judgment Day, you'll hear these words again if you don't repent. On Judgment Day, these words will haunt you forever if you don't repent. There's an urgency. Should be a desperation in your heart this morning not to kill a baby, but to repent. You kill this baby this morning. And just like Abel, God receives it. But you, you are left as a murderer and a sinner. And God will not let murders into his kingdom. You must repent. Jesus said, repent or perish. back in though. Huh? They go right back in though. Yeah. Have any come out and stayed out? I don't think so. Just the men just the the man this the men have come out and stayed out. really focus on using my diaphragm though so I can project it yeah pushing from here so I can project further yeah not wear my voice out to your conscience. And we're here to prick your conscience, to stir up conviction in your soul. Man, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do about it? says in Romans 1 that they hold the truth in unrighteousness. You have the truth in your conscience that this is a sin, that God is not pleased, he hates it. But you quench it. You shut it out of your mind. You justify it. Where's your conscience that God gave you, ma'am? Have you quieted your conscience don't you care about what you're going to do when you die? Don't you care about standing before God? You have a conscience that God gave you. Are you listening to it? The Holy Spirit is trying to prick your conscience to get you to understand that your soul is on the way to hell, that this isn't right. 
but there's hope in Christ Jesus. Stop blocking it out. One day you got to die, and you're going to stand before God, ma'am. You're going to stand before God, and you're not going to be laughing anymore. You're not going to be flicking him off either. No more laughing when you stand before God. Yes, you can put your middle finger up at us. But if you do that to God on Judgment Day, it's going to fall off. That middle finger is going to burn up. And we don't want that for you. Don't harden your heart. Jesus said, become like a little child, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Right. To come to God like a child. Right. Like the child that you're murdering. Defenseless, innocent, broken, not knowing what to do, in tears, giving up your life to God. Coming to Him not knowing anything, like a child. Don't get mad when you see people being killed by cops. Don't get mad. Unless you look at yourself first. In fact, people getting killed by cops is so small compared to 53 million babies being murdered in the 37 years from Roe versus Wade. How many is it a year? Uh, I think it's like a, I don't know how it is. A lot. It's a lot. Millions. It's in the millions, folks. In New York City, the birth rate of African Americans has gone down. The birth rate of African Americans has gone down in New York City because African Americans are killing their children. Don't tell me black lives matter if you're killing your black life in your womb. Don't tell me that. Don't get mad if you see a cop killing a child when you're killing your child. Hypocrite. That's being a hypocrite. God loves that child, ma'am. There's other options. If black lives matter to you, what about that black life in the womb? That could be a servant of God one day. Is that, is that an older man? It looked like it to me. Sure did. Let your baby become a statistic. That baby is precious in the sight of God. And your soul <laughs> is in danger. If you want to preach, brothers? Yeah. I'm just going. <laughs> I like tag team in it. <laughs> you know, a real man, if he saw his child's life was in danger, yeah. would run to wherever that child was and try to stop the harm that was going to befall the child. But you brought your child to the danger and sit in your car and do nothing like cowards. You're not a real man. You're like a dog in heat. You don't have to kill your baby. It's not God's will for you to kill your baby. God wants you to be a mother, not a murderer. Jesus died if you're on the cross. He calls you to repentance. God is calling you to repentance. God is calling you to repent of your sins. I'm going to go preach over there again. Yeah, I'm just, <laughs> that's a good idea. Praise God. <clears throat> God sees your wickedness, sir. You're bringing your daughter, your girlfriend, whoever she is, to murder her baby. It's wicked. It's shameful. God's going to hold you accountable for this. 
You chauffeur that baby to its death. You deliver that baby to its death. Shame on you. Repent. Repent. Don't sit in your car like a coward. Don't drive away like a coward. Repent. Bring her back out of that room, out of that murder mill. Bring her back out of that assassin place. You're paying a hitman today. You have blood money in your pocket, blood money in your bank. God sees it. Your, your hands are not free from blood. You have the blood of that baby on your hands. I pray that every time you even think about fornicating, you see a bloody dead baby to realize what you're doing this morning, to realize how wicked it is to kill your baby, to kill your grandbaby. They're a blessing from the Lord, and you destroy this blessing. You're a hypocrite. You don't love God. You don't love your neighbor. You don't even love yourself. But God is calling you to love. God is calling you to love your neighbor. Love your neighbor, don't kill your neighbor. Thou shalt not kill. You may think you're okay, but you're not. Maybe you're not breaking the law of the land, but you're breaking God's law. God is calling you to repentance. Turn from this wicked place. Turn from this place of murdering babies. Turn from this place of infanticide. Get right with God while you still can. It's not God's will for you to be here. It's not God's will for you to murder your baby. It's God's will you be a mother and a father, not a murderer. Are you coming to murder your baby this morning, sir? Are you coming to murder your baby this morning? Don't try to act like it's no big deal. Come on, man. There's other options. You can get help. Killing your baby. God said, Thou shalt not kill. God commands all men everywhere to repent. God commands all men everywhere to repent because there's coming a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. It's a wicked place. You go in here this morning and kill your baby of blood on your hands, blood money, to take out a baby's life. Don't you feel guilty? Don't you feel shame? Don't you feel condemnation? You should. It's wrong. There's other options. Give your baby up for adoption, don't kill it. Give it a chance, give it a life. Let your baby live. It's like your mother lets you live. So you put a mask on to protect you from a virus, but you won't protect your baby from murder? You'll put a mask on, you'll put gloves on to protect yourself from a virus that kills maybe 2% of the people who get it, but you bring your baby in here to be murdered? By an assassin? It's wicked. It's shameful. And God sent two men of God here this morning to plead with you not to kill your baby. What are you doing here? What is wrong with you? What is, are you that hard-hearted? Are you planning to leave here and go shoot a bunch of children? No difference. 
God is not pleased with you. God is angry with you. And God is calling you to repentance. How selfish can you be? You protect yourself from a virus, but you won't protect a child from murder. Shame. Shame on you, sir, for bringing her here this morning. Shame on you for bringing her here. You need to repent. You're in trouble with God, sir. You're in trouble with God. And listen, you think I'm judgmental? Wait till you meet my God. Wait till you meet how judgmental my God is. He judges in righteousness. The God of the Bible will judge you in righteousness. You will not be acquitted of this crime except by the blood of Jesus Christ, repentance and faith. No one makes you come here this morning. No one made you make an appointment. No one makes you walk in there. No one makes you stay in there. No one makes you sit on your butt and do nothing when someone's killing your baby. Bunch of cowards here this morning, supposed men. A bunch of cowards who don't care about their child, who don't run to protect their child, but drive somewhere to kill their child. All the while wearing a mask to protect yourself from a supposed virus that'll kill you. Do you not see the contradiction? Do you not feel the guilt and shame? Do you not see how wicked you are that you've come to this place? Turn from your wickedness. Go home. Repent. What? Someone hits your car, you'll throw a fit. Someone hits your precious little car, you'll throw a fit. But someone kills your baby, you do nothing. Someone kills your baby, you do nothing. Someone scratched your car. Oh, my baby, my car. You scratched my car. But someone kills your baby, you do nothing. Shame on you. You treasure a car more than a baby. Made in God's image. Has your DNA. It's not God's will for you. God's will for you to be responsible. A man, a woman, a mother, a father, a grandfather. That's God's will for you. It's not too late. You can change your mind. You can repent. You can repent. Change your mind. Don't harden your heart. Soften your heart. Hear the word of God to you today. He's calling you to repent. He's calling you to stop it. He's calling you to go and sin no more. Don't kill your baby. Don't become a murderer. Thou shalt not kill. Don't kill your baby. It's a shameful thing to kill your baby. And whatever that man was who impregnated you, he doesn't love you or that baby doesn't try to stop you. Shame, Amen. guilt, condemnation for your sin. But the peace of God is available to you. But come to your senses and repent. He will give you a new heart, new desire. We are no longer going to hate your baby, but love your baby and treasure your baby as the gift of God it is. God wants you to see. Your baby is a gift, not a cursing. Your murder of your baby is a curse. Being a mother, a father, is a privilege. It's a blessing, not something to be scorned, something to be treasured, something to be taken seriously and sobry, sober, sober, with sobriety. That's what motherhood and fatherhood is like. But you treat it like an inconvenience, like a curse, like a wicked thing. This is God's design for family. One man, one woman, marriage, children, a blessing. Ma'am, you don't have to kill your baby. Don't kill your baby. Isn't it amazing that a strange man cares more about your baby than you do? 
Doesn't that baffle you? The hatred you have in your heart? Dennis is telling me some testimonies in Ethiopia of, of some daughters he takes care of. Well, not his blood daughters, but as a result of women that wanted to do an abortion. But you know, those women like had no government assistance and nothing like financially, and they were completely hopeless. It wasn't like a contraceptive, and I'm not saying it's right, yeah. but judging between a person who's hopeless with no money and someone who's just proud and doing it as a contraceptive, man, they were more receptive to somebody taking the child to take care of them yeah. than a person who's hard and proud, you know. I look forward to Jesus returning and making this all right, man. Yeah. Setting it all straight. Look at all the cars here, man. This one, man. Huh? There's 10 cars right there. No. 10 cars. Or it's 11 cars. 11 or 12 cars. We seen like 12 or 13 cars this morning, man. Man, this guy's hiding. BMW, like he got out. You is he tell. in the back seat? Yeah, he's in the back seat. You can, tell, you can tell he's like, like really convicted, and he's like, I don't know if he's struggling with it or not, but I, I saw the look on his face. Um, and his, I don't know if that's his girlfriend that walked in there, but he went in the back seat. And just, he's, really? You're gonna hide in your back seat, sir? I don't know. Can't face the music. What you're doing is wrong, sir. So you can buy a BMW, but you can't have a baby, huh? Yeah, your priorities are really in the right place, aren't they? You can pay for that BMW payment, but can't pay child support, can't provide for a child. How about you get rid of the BMW, get a clunker, and have your child instead? Stop hiding in the back seat like a coward. God sees you. Your cowardice. The shame and guilt of your sin is upon you for a reason. God is trying to bring you to repentance. Don't you see? Don't you see that your conscience is working properly? No one hides in the backseat of the car while their girlfriend or wife or whatever she is to you goes inside there and kills a baby unless they feel guilty. And you are guilty, sir. You're guilty. You have blood on your hands. If I had a girlfriend and my wife, they wanted to have an abortion, I wouldn't let them have one penny. It's amazing. You'll protect yourself from a virus, but will you protect your child from murder? You protect yourself from a virus, but will you protect your child from murder? It's not God's will for you this morning, ma'am, to kill your baby. Don't act like you don't hear me. Don't act like you don't know this is wrong. You know this is wrong. You should not be doing this. Change your mind. Repent. It's not God's will for you, ma'am, to kill your child. Is other things you can do instead. Other things you can do instead. Don't kill your baby. Don't become a murderer. Repent. Become a mother instead. There's no excuse for your sin. I don't know, dude. How do you walk through that? People are so hard-hearted. It's a, it's a whole other level of sin, though, man. When you walk in the face of such preaching and, and, and understanding and just do it anyway, especially if you're troubled. Because some, some of these people are a little troubled in their face. It's like they're running away. Don't do it. Change your mind. Repent.
Don't ignore God's word to you. So she had earbuds in, got in her quick as she could. Do you realize, you cowards in your cars, not only are you killing your baby, you're hurting your, your girlfriend or wife, wherever she is to you, you're hurting her too by agreeing to this? Women have all kinds of side effects from abortion, all kinds of negative side effects from abortion. Do you even care? The woman in there right now may never be able to have a baby after this. They may not recover physically, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually because of this crime. You know, when men go to war, they come back with something called, what's it called? Post-traumatic stress disorder. These women in here are going to have the same kind of thing because they're not killing strangers in battle. They're killing a baby in their womb. Innocent blood, innocent life. And you agree with it and you go along with it, and you pay for it. And a man you don't even know cares more about your baby than you. That's wicked. She's here by herself. Now look at all these cars in here, bro. Two, four, six. Not one of them are cheap cars. True. Look at these cars, man. You got a Camaro. Yeah. You got a BMW. Nice Highlander. I mean, all these cars are nice. Toyota Highlander. These, these are expensive cars, man. These are nicer cars than the car I got across the street. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, these are nice cars, man. They, they said they can't afford children. God doesn't take the excuse that you can't afford children seriously. You afford so many things that you don't need. So many unnecessary things, like the car you're in right now. How much does that car cost you? $10,000, $20,000 or more? Camaros, 30, 40,000, BMWs even more? You care more about that car than your child. Not God's will, ma'am. That you kill your baby. Go home, ma'am. Cancel your appointment with the hitman. Cancel your appointment with the assassin. Put your blood money back in your pocketbook, back in your bank account, and use it to raise your child instead of bring your child down to the grave. This is probably the most heartbreaking ministry you can be involved in, man. It's not God's will for you to take your baby's life. It's safe and sound in your, in your womb. God knew that child before it was even started in your womb, ma'am. Go home and think about it. There's other options for you. A family member might want to raise that child. If you don't, there's a lot of loving families that will take that child. If you're worried about the pain of childbirth, there's epidurals and things like that. There's help. Don't listen to the lies that they feed you in here. Don't listen to the lies. They want your money. They don't care about your baby. 
They're not going to give you another choice. And if you care about choice so much, what about the choice of the baby in the womb? That's right. If that's a girl and you care about women's rights and women's choice, what about that little girl in your womb? <coughs> if you care about black lives, black lives matter, what about that life in your womb? It's hypocrisy. God cares about that child and he cares about your soul. Men, stop being a coward. There's help for you. You need to stand up and protect your child. The woman is a little weaker. You need to put your foot down and be a man and tell that woman that you're gonna take care of this child. If I gotta live in a shack, if I gotta sacrifice my toys and my liquor and my cars and my whatever, whatever you like to buy over a child, you're a man, you're supposed to make sacrifices for your children. You just see my closet compared to my kids and my wife. If we had no food, I'll fast for a week before I let my kids go hungry. And how much more does the Father in heaven love that child? If you're hopeless, there's hope in Christ Jesus. Don't listen to the devil who wants to steal, kill, and destroy you. Ma'am, come on, there's other options, young lady, please. Are you, do you go to church on Sunday, ma'am? Listen, I know you hear our voices. God gave you a conscience. That baby needs a mother. Give the child to a family that loves them. <clears throat> what if they're using their stimulus checks to kill their baby? Yeah, good point. Probably. Because they're, I mean, they, they've, been stung, they've been coming out. <clears throat> There's other options, young lady. You don't have to kill that baby. You don't have to kill that baby. God loves that child. If that life matters to you, that baby matters to God. There's other options, ma'am. Listen to your conscience that's telling you this isn't right. You can get help. God is watching what you're doing right now, ma'am. Please. One of the things the Lord hates is the shedding of innocent blood. Don't act like you care about women's rights and about women's choice if you won't give a choice to that baby in the womb. You're not giving that baby a choice. That's right. And what if it's a woman? You're not giving that woman a choice. You're not giving that woman a choice. You call yourself a feminist and love women and women's rights? You don't love that woman in the womb because that is a baby. There's not a biologist in the country that won't tell you that that's a baby. That that's not a child in the womb. Science is not on your side to say it's a clump of cells. That heart is beating by 20 days. And there's other options. Young lady, there's other options for you, for that child. You can get help. We can help you even. We'll point you in the right direction. There's other options for that baby. And not only this, folks, it's murder in the sight of God. Listen to your conscience. Listen to your conscience that God gave you to be able to tell what's right and wrong. Don't smile and mock. Listen to that God-given conscience 
Is she here to kill her grandpa, maybe? Don't kill this baby! There's help for that baby! Listen! If black lives matter to you, don't kill that black life! Folks, these abortion clinics target African American communities! Because they want to destroy the birth rate! It's modern day Holocaust! They seem like they're all drugged and ho drugged up right there, man. Yeah. I'm gonna uh, rest my voice. Yeah. Two little spurts here and there. <laughs> <clears throat> you want some water? No, I got some right here. Amazing. The parking lot's full, man. It's full, bro. Tuesday. So the stay-at-home order is not applicable when you want to kill your baby, huh? The stay-at-home order is not applicable when you want to kill a baby, huh? Are you here this morning with stimulus check money to kill your baby? Are you here this morning engaging in supposed pro-choice? but not giving the baby a choice? If you really believed in pro-choice, you want to know what the baby thinks. You want to know what the baby wants. And if that baby can speak for itself every time, no matter how hard it knew its life was going to be, it would choose life. No baby, if it had a choice, would choose to be chopped up and sucked out with a tube, have a skull crushed and sucked out with a tube and put in the garbage. They're gonna put your baby in the garbage. Is that where your baby belongs? In the garbage? Many of these types of places, it will sell baby parts to people. That's what you want for your baby? Be put in the garbage, torn to pieces? That's what your baby's worth to you? It's a shame. You're not blessed, you're cursed. You're cursed for bringing these people here this morning. You're cursed for supporting infanticide and baby murder. It's wrong. It's wrong in God's eyes. Don't deceive yourself into thinking you're okay with God in the midst of this sin. It's not okay what you're doing. God's gonna mock you in derision on Judgment Day if you don't repent. You laugh and mock now, woman, but God will laugh and mock at you on Judgment Day if you don't repent. Shame on you, sinner. Shame on you. You're wicked. Don't harden your hearts. Don't have a hard heart towards God. Don't have a hard heart towards your baby. Don't be so cold, so cold-blooded, so murderous. You know, when someone is robbing a bank and there's a driver in a getaway car, he's just as guilty while you sit here waiting for a baby to be murdered. You are guilty. Guilty. You drove this person here to murder their baby. You are guilty. Don't think you're exonerated. Don't think you're innocent because you're not making the final choice. You drove them here. If you didn't drive them here, they wouldn't have the choice, would they? Shame on you for taking part in this, murdering innocent, unborn children. You know, the safest place in the world for an unborn baby should be a mother's womb. But in America, in the world, 
The most dangerous place for a baby to be is a mother's womb. Not the inner city, not a drug house, but the mother's womb. Millions upon millions of babies have been killed and their blood's on your hands. You continue to support this as you won't stand up for righteousness. You won't stand up for what is right. You laugh and mock what is right and stand up for what is wrong. You help people commit sin and you're going to be accountable. God is going to hold you accountable for your sins. Don't deceive yourself. It's not God's will for you to murder your baby. Don't go in there, man. Listen, you can adopt this baby, please. Hey, listen to me, man. You're the man. Don't be a coward. God loves that child. You can give it up for adoption. Hey! Man, they didn't get in that car, in that truck. They were over there for a while. They were over there for a while. They parked over there and came to this park. They parked over there. They heard every bit of what was going on out here. I even went over there across the wall. You asked like, him. You asked him if he was going there, right? Yeah. And he said no? He said no. Uh, he said no. So he, he thought he was the, they were the Catholics. So he repented of his repentance. <laughs> we're over here to pray. But he's, he's more of a, I know this sounds weird, but he's more of a man than these guys sitting in their car. Yeah. I mean, in a sense. He'll be back out in a minute. They'll make him come out. Yeah, probably. They'll say coronavirus and we've got to go out. It's really a ploy, oh, it's, it's a ploy of them, too, because they don't want anyone to influence them to change their mind. That's true. They don't want any more guilty consciences in there. Yeah. I want him to come over and talk to them. Ma'am, why do you protect yourself from a coronavirus, but you won't protect your baby? Why are you wearing a mask and gloves? What about your baby that you're supposed to protect? Do you see the problem, ma'am? <coughs> That's a good point, by the way. If you're here today to kill a baby or to help someone kill a baby, and you don't feel shame, and you don't feel guilt, and you try to laugh it off as if nothing wrong is going on, you're in great danger. You have a seared conscience, a corrupted conscience, a defiled conscience. You don't even care what you're doing. It's innocent life, innocent child. Shame on you for coming to this place having babies put to death. Babies are nothing worthy of a death penalty. But you, a murderer, have. And even if the American law system won't bring justice, someday God will. And I pray before that happens, you get right with God. That's so funny, huh? It's a big joke, huh? Yeah, 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 I can tell. It's not. I'm not doing nothing. Oh, okay. You're just leading your friend there, right? You're just leading your friend to there, right? Why would you leave? Shame on you. You don't love your friend. That's not love, ma'am. You're you a mocker. A, why do you wear a shirt that says bless? You know who does the blessing is God. But yet you're doing the things that God hates. Don't you care about how God feels about you? God will not bless sin. The devil, man. Your flesh. Listen to your conscience that the Holy Spirit is bringing. This is not God's will for you. God will not bless this. God will curse this. You will reap what you sow. We're here for your good, for the good of your baby, for the glory of God. But you might hear the truth and be set free.
Jesus Christ, you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Jesus Christ said, I am the truth. Jesus wants to set you free from your lies. Want to set you free from your murderous ways. Turn to Jesus today. He, he can give you hope. that interesting? You know why? Do y'all know why that these abortion clinics target African American communities? Do you know why? Because the founder of the eugenics abortion movement was a woman named Margaret Sanger. And she was a racist who hated black people. That's right. She supported the KKK and she, 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 she financed and spearheaded a movement to destroy African Americans That's because right. she hated them. That's right. That's the truth. Watch a documentary called Black Holocaust. Right. And you are participating in her work. Did you know that the, the, the black birth rate in New York City is going down now? Like it's in an unsurvivable condition. Because they target the African American population to destroy them. It's modern day slavery holocaust. Did you know that? Do your research, man. Do your research. It's an institutionalized system that targets African-American communities. And you're making whoever's baby a statistic. Don't get mad when you see these cops killing children or whoever, because you're killing a black baby. Don't get incensed over cops. And you know what? It's very few cops that do that compared to the amount of African-American babies that are killed every year by their own mothers. And God is not pleased with that. God knew those children before they entered into their mother's womb. Even if it was a quote-unquote mistake, that child can be redeemed. That child has a purpose in life. He can be a servant of God one day. hypocrisy in front of African Americans' yeah. eyes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because, you know, so many people talk about black lives. And I, I don't use that just because I'm political. I yeah. use that to, to prick them. That's right. Their conscience. That's right. You know? I, I, I mean, I know all lives matter, but a lot of people believe that and have this incensed feeling when, like, a white cop kills a black, a black man in the street, which happens, but it's not as much as this. That's right. And so if you're incensed about that, That's and right. you care about destroying racism and hatred, young lady, there's another way, ma'am. Don't give your baby over to the fire, to the needle, to the, to the pill. Come on, please. Turn to Jesus. Sorry. No, you're good, bro. Go, keep going. Um, Second Camaro. Oh, yeah, it is. That it's a woman. That's a woman. I'm just waiting for one of them to hit each other. For what? One of them to hit each other. Oh, the They're car. precious cars, yeah. Oh, yeah. And see how they react. So I can rebuke them for it. Yeah. They treat their car like they're so precious this is today, man. Incredible. Man, it is, man. This is way more. We've seen like 15 cars today, man. This is more than I've seen. On a Saturday over there. Yeah. I mean, maybe maybe I was going on a less busy day, but. Hey, bro, when I looked at all the abortion clinics in this area, this one had the highest ratings too. Like everybody was talking about how good they are, wow. how nice they are, that kind of stuff. So lots of people want to go to this one. Well, this is a good spot to preach. Yeah, it is. Nobody's over here. Right. So they claim this ground, man. Yeah. Come here like once a week or something like that. Yeah.